Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I have here the Velocity Micro Cruise T410 tablet. It's an Android tablet with a 10-inch uh, display. It's a 1024 by 600 pixel display, so not quite as high resolution as you get with some high-end tablets, uh, but this is a slightly less expensive tablet. It's got a uh, case that's about 0.4 inches thick. It's about a, um, a pound in weight, runs Google Android 2.3, has 512 megabytes of RAM, 4 gigabytes of built-in storage, and there's a micro SD card slot in case you want to add some more space for uh, apps or data. Um, not all of that space is available, uh, that 4 gigs is available, there's about 2.5 gigs available for data and about uh, 512 or so megs for uh, applications out of the box because the operating system does use up some space. Uh, 802.11 BGN Wi-Fi, front-facing camera, and an accelerometer. There's no uh, gyroscope though. And you can see some of the applications it comes preloaded with, including the Amazon App Store for Android, Adobe Flash, uh, Kindle App, uh, Quick Office, and so forth. In uh, terms of what it looks like, looks like a tablet. Um, it's uh, got a micro USB card, uh, or micro uh, USB port, micro SD card slot, and headphone jack. And around this side, all we've really got are uh, power button and volume buttons. And that's pretty much it for around the edges. There's also a little microphone built in here. So if you can use the front-facing camera here and the microphone to do uh, video chat or, uh, or whatnot, uh, there is no camera on the rear. There's just one speaker, which is reasonably loud, um, but it's it's not a very high quality speaker. If you want to use it for listening to uh, internet radio or something, that's fine. Uh, you can watch a video, but if you're in a noisy room, it's not going to be ideal and you're going to want to use a pair of headphones. Um, you'll notice that there are no buttons on the front, so even though this guy runs Android 2.3 Gingerbread, which uh, relies on um, using the home and, and back and menu and search buttons, um, that you have to use these on-screen buttons to uh, to use those functions. There's nothing built into the case. And that makes sense on a tablet uh, because when you rotate the screen, if the buttons were down here, and then you'd have to sort of go to the side to use them and so forth. So um, that's one of the reasons why I think uh, Google with Honeycomb and uh, Ice Cream Sandwich has moved to a software button uh, layout instead of using hardware buttons. But instead of using Honeycomb or Ice Cream Sandwich, because this came out before uh, the source code was available to uh, to vendors, um, Velocity Micro went with their own sort of custom toolbar here. And what they've done is they've taken this, you know, the, the notification tray that's available in most Android devices and added buttons to the top. Now, because they're on the top, they can be sort of awkward to hit because it's more comfortable really to hold this from the bottom most of the time. And that means that from time to time, you're going to have to reach your hand all the way up in order to uh, access those functions, which is a little bit less than ideal. Um, it's not as big a problem on a smaller device like the Cruise T408 um, because you don't have as far to go. But um, on the T410, because it's such a larger device, that's, that's kind of a long way to reach your hand up. Um, I didn't love having to reach my hand all the way up on the T408, but it's, it's a little bit worse, a little bit less convenient on this model. Um, in terms of the Amazon App Store, it does come with uh, tens of thousands of applications. It's not quite as extensive as what you get with the official Google Android market, which does not ship with this device, um, but it's, it's a pretty good user experience, and you can find lots of applications, and you can sideload applications. So, for example, the Dolphin HD web browser, if you manage to come across it somewhere else, you can use it. Um, by copying it to the SD card, downloading it to the uh, main storage or whatever, and clicking it and installing it. Um, now, one of the things that you'll notice here is that we're using the stock uh, gingerbread keyboard, which works really nicely for thumb typing in this mode. I can type Lilliputing, but it's not really meant to be stretched out this wide, and so we have these flat rectangular keys that are kind of hard to type on, I think. Um, it's doable, but it's also hard to reach your thumbs all the way across. So um, using Gingerbread on a 10-inch device is a little bit more awkward. Uh, the web browser is not the fastest, uh, or web browsing experience. This is using the Dolphin uh, web browser, clearly. But it's not the slowest I've ever used, either. It's, um, this device has an ARM Cortex A8 single-core processor. I think it's a 1 gigahertz processor. And it's reasonably fast. It's sort of comparable to a state-of-the-art cell phone from 2010. Um, it's not as fast as some of the things they're going to find on the market today, but again, and this device isn't as expensive as some of the things you'll find on the market today. And it does load web pages reasonably well, uh, handles smooth zooming, and so forth. Uh, also works pretty well with third-party apps, uh, such as Angry Birds. The volume is turned down.
and this would probably go a lot faster if I had queued it up. But you can see we've got fairly uh, smooth gameplay here. The graphics look good. Uh, other third-party apps that I've tested on here include, uh, let's see, we've got Fruit Ninja. The Netflix application also works reasonably well. Uh, the touchscreen is pretty responsive, does multi-touch. Um, and, uh, let's see. So, YouTube works. Camera works. It's not a very high quality camera, but it's uh, good enough for snapping a quick uh, front facing photo or for uh, making a video call or something along those lines. Um, so, overall, you know, the experience of using this guy is um, decent, if not spectacular. <laughs> um, now, some of the things that you might want to do, say, using it as an ebook reader can be a little bit awkward at times, I find, because the 1024 by 600 pixel 10 inch display um, plus the Velocity Micro software makes sort of a strange experience. So in widescreen mode here, we don't have a dual dis dual panel display, so we just sort of have a lot of text. And of course you can, this is using the Amazon Kindle uh, app, which comes with the device. You can increase the fonts, which will help with that to some degree. And you can, of course, rotate to the side but then you sort of have this thing that's much, much longer than it is um, wide. And uh, I, th I think a, a 4 by 3 aspect ratio display really works a lot better than a 10, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. And that's why I think you see things like the uh, Amazon Kindle Fire and the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet coming out with um, smaller screens. Uh, they do have a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, 10, 24 by 600, but on a smaller display, which I think works a little bit better. Now, the other thing that uh, really bugs me about using the Amazon Kindle app here and the Velocity Micro uh, enhancements is that there's no way to access the menu button without tapping the screen. So you tap the screen, bring up the menu button, that's great, except now you've tapped the screen and if you want it to go away, the top line of text is actually covered by the menu bar. So that just sort of seems like a, a simple design mistake. You have to wait a little while for it to go away. Um, and the way you flip pages here, it's sometimes hard to prevent that bar from coming up, and then you just have to wait for it to go away. So the uh, experience of reading ebooks is not as good as I would like it to be. Uh, surfing the web, pretty good. Playing games, pretty good. Overall, the experience of using this tablet, pretty good. Um, now, for the tricky part, it costs $300. Uh, it's almost identical in terms of hardware to the less expensive... Um, this to the uh, less expensive Velocity Cruise Micro T408 tablet, but it um, has the larger display, and that's really the only difference. They've got the same processor, same RAM, same amount of storage, uh, but this guy runs about $200, whereas this one runs about $300. So if you really want that larger screen, you're going to have to pay for it, and then suddenly you move from the point of getting a, a, something that's obviously a budget class device to something that's cheaper than, say, a Samsung Galaxy Tab or a Motorola Zoom, but not really that much cheaper. We're starting to th see 10-inch uh, tablets from Arcos and, uh, and others, and uh, possibly uh, even some top-tier vendors that are, that are in the three dollars $400 range. The Asus EPAD Transformer, for instance, runs about $400, and you can often find it on sale for less. Um, at $300, I'm not sure that I would recommend something like the Cruise T410 if you can find it on sale for substantially less than $300 and you don't want to spend money on a really expensive tablet with uh, bleeding-edge graphics and, and a quad-core processor or something along those lines. Um, it might be a, a lower cost alternative, and it does do a lot of what you would expect an Android tablet to do um, for $300 or less. So there you go. That's a, a quick video review of the Velocity Micro Cruise T410 10-inch Android tablet. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing.